rolling. And when you're ready, bro, action. Thank you very much. I was with Ahim Nishatwan Rajin, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Two weeks ago, I had a debate. Uh, well, I wouldn't say a debate. I had a, a discussion with uh, Mr. Muhammad Hijab. And um, he kind of overpowered me, right? Uh, with his speech, right? Yeah? No, but no, no, you need to answer my question no, no, because no, I've been I answering. I don't know this answer, what you're saying. Because uh, no, I, no, because fine, so you, no, just, be, just be, on, be, be honest then. I am being honest. Khalas, you don't know so, the answer. So, so, now, so do you know the answer? Wait, hold on, sorry. Do you know the answer? My question is what, when you got the Quran, you, we, some people in the Ummah read it and Malik Yomuddin, some say Malik Yomuddin, uh, one as Quran alone, are you saying that one of them is not correct or are you saying both of them are correct? Okay, the question is what the word no, but it's the same root. One right? of them means, okay, one of them means owner and the other one means king. So which one is it? Owner or king or is it both? I could say both. I could say both. both. Yeah. Okay, good. I could say both. Perfect. Now, give, okay, excellent. But I would choose excellent. the king as the narrative. You would choose, no problem. But now I'm asking a question. You would say both, yeah? Where in the Quran does it say Allah has revealed the Quran in more than one way for each ayah? Uh, so I'm going to be clarifying his uh, misconceptions right here in, in regards to what he was saying. Uh, because uh, there's a lot of things he lied about. Uh, he lied about Allah. Uh, so um, I'm just going to clarify that. Uh, and then uh, I will also clarify another issue in regards to him uh, making a video, I think it's about two or three years back, right? I went back here and I had a look at his video where he tries to uh, say that um, he had a discussion with a, a brother, Cameron. He's a Quran only brother like, like myself. Uh, by the way, I'm, I'm Ziad, I'm, I follow Quran only. And I've been a Sunni uh, all my life. Past four, four and a half years, I've become Quran only because I've been reading the book for myself. Um, with the um, understanding right here. Yeah? So I've come to my realization that our only guidance is Quran only. So uh, let's begin, yeah? First of all, right, yeah? let's um, begin about the word Malik and Malik. He said, right, yeah? the word Malik, milk and mulk are from different root meanings, right? And I was confused because I knew it's, it's not the case because it's malk, mulk, or milk, or whatever they say, it's still from the same root meaning, right, yeah? So I'm going to say that now, with evidence, that the root word, meme, lamb, calf, has occurred more than uh, 206 times in the Quran. 206 times. And, and this root word comes with the word malakat, malik, malik, Malk, Mulk, Malak, Malakut, and Mamluk. These are the words from the same root meaning. Meme, Lamb, Kaf, right, yeah? So when he said that they are not from the same root, right, he lied. So he needs to correct that, right? He needs to understand that what he said is wrong and be a man and say, look, I was wrong, right, yeah? Um, and I apologize and ask Allah for forgiveness, right, yeah? Anyway, this word, Malik is in Surah Fatiha, uh, Ayah 4, and Surah Ali Imran 3, Ayah 26. And also um, Surah Yasin 36, Ayah 71. And um, you can say, and these words all have this meaning. Sovereign, to rule, command, reign, be capable, to control, power, authority, king, kingdom, possessor, holder, pro proprietor, the owner, the master. These are the words, the meanings from Meme Lamb Kaf, right? And in the Surah Fatiha, right, yeah, uh, you can translate it. Um, owner of the day of recompense or you can say possessor of the day of recompense and in surah al imran say O oh allah owner possessor of sovereignty or king so let me just say right say O oh, oh allah owner of sovereignty you give sovereignty to whom you will and you take sovereignty away from whom you will you honor whom you will and you humble whom you will. 
in your hand is all good. Indeed, you are of all things competent. Now I can I can say owner or possessor, or I can say sovereignty or kingdom. Any of these words, right? Yeah, it's not going to change the meaning. It's not going to change the Quran whatsoever, right? Yeah. So I just want to clarify that, right? Yeah. And the uh, the third uh, verse, right? Yeah, is a uh, uh, Surah Yasin 36, Ayah 71. Have you not seen that we created from for them with our hands livestock that they own, or you could say they possess? Still the same meaning. It's not going to contradict the Quran whatsoever, right? Yeah. And another thing, right? Yeah, he tries to say there's seven at roofs. Seven at roofs, right? Different dialect of uh, Quran readings. Now, this is a big fat lie because in Surah Baqarah, Ayah 121, it clearly states those to whom we have given the book recite it, Yatlunahu, with its correct recitation. Those believe with it. And whoever disbelieves with it, it is they who are the losers. So that proves right here, yeah? recite it, just Luna who is singular. So this, the Quran recitation only came with one kira, one kira, there's no seven kira. Quran confirms it right yeah? Now he can't say right yeah? the Quran does not confirm it. He can only say hadith confirms seven art rules. But like I said, I don't believe in hadith, I believe in Quran only, right yeah? And my criterion for Quran is Quran and our as believers, sorry, as believers, we should only follow Quran because this is the this is the book from Allah sent down to all mankind, right? Yeah, and as a mercy and a guidance to the people, right? Yeah, singular Quran came down, right? Yeah, not hadith, not any of those things, right? Yeah, and not the uh, any other scriptures, right? Yeah, Allah only brought down the pure Quran, right? Yeah, which has correct writings and purified writings in them. And then another verse right here, yeah? Allah says in Surah Al-Nisa 3, Ayah 78, and among them is a group who twist their tongue, twist their tongue with the book, so that you may think it is from the book, while it is not from the book. And they say it is from Allah, while it is not from Allah. And they say about Allah lies, while they know. So these people who know right here, yeah? they're lying about Allah right here, yeah? They twist their tongues, Allah is saying, right, with the words, right? So we can uh, clearly say, right, yeah, that these people deliberately lie about Allah, right, yeah, knowingly, right, yeah, and Allah will judge them accordingly. Now, um, let me just uh, tell you the definition. Sorry, no. Yeah, the definition of reading and the definition of reciting. There are two different uh, words. They mean uh, similar, but they're slightly different. The reading definition is, reading is an act of looking at printed words and understanding or comprehending what they are saying. Or the act of saying those words out loud or interpreting those words. So looking at printed words and what they are saying and interpreting those words, right, yeah? Hold on, we got people coming through. <coughs> Sorry. Oh, you're going down. Oh, I'm sorry. And reciting, definition for reciting is similar to reading but slightly different, right? Yeah? It says repeat aloud or declaim from memory a poem or a passage before an audience. So what you, what you do when you read, you're reading it by looking at the printed words, what they are saying and interpreting those words, right? Yeah? And reciting is from memory. When you, when you do the kira, when you recite, it's from memory. You're not reading you're just reciting, right? And it says here, <coughs> so that's the definition of reading. Now, here it's talking about the reciting, right? Yeah? In Surah um, al, al bayyana 98, verse 2 and 3. A messenger from God, Allah, reciting, reciting, uh, pages purified, within which are correct writings. So when he's reciting, right, he's reciting uh, pages that are purified and which are correct writings in them. Surah Abbasa 80, ayah 11 and 16. Now indeed, these verses 
are a, are a reminder. So whoever will remember, will, may remember it in honored sheets, exalted and purified by the hands of scribes, noble and dutiful. Surah Fusilat 41, Ayah 40 and 42. It says, those who distort our verses are not hidden from us. So is he who is cast into hell better or one who comes to cure on the day of resurrection? Do whatever you wish. He is a seer of what you do. Indeed, those who disbelieve in the reminder after it has come to them, and indeed it is a mighty book, not comes to a falsehood from between his hands and not behind it. A revelation from the wise and praiseworthy. So now, what Allah is saying here, Quran reading came down chronological order from Surah Fatiha all the way to Surah Nas. And even if we remove all the diacritical vows and tashkis, God has preserved the reading. No one can add or subtract, not even to his letter. Not even to his letter. Example is, if I get all the Quran Hafiz that don't know each other right, yeah? You get a Japanese Quran Hafiz, you get a Chinese Quran Hafiz, you get a Pakistani Quran Hafiz, or any of the Quran Hafiz right, yeah? From any part of the world, and they, you bring them together, line them up together, they don't know each other right, and you tell them to recite Surah Fatiha all the way to Surah An-Nas, right? Every single word to its letter will come back preserved in its original text even if we remove the Tashkil. So the Quran is preserved, regardless of whether they want to say Malik or Malik. You know what I'm saying, right, yeah? Or twist their tongues with it. And Surah Baqarah, Ayah 23 and 24. And if you are in doubt about what we have sent down upon our servant, then come with a Surah the like thereof and call upon your witnesses other than Allah, if you should be truthful. But if you do not, and you will never be able to, then fear the fire whose fuel is men and stones prepared for the disbelievers. Now here, Allah is challenging them to bring one surah like the Quran, right? Anything, whether they want to bring Hadith, whether they want to bring Bible, whether they want to bring any, any books, any science books, or any book writer of the world, right? Allah said, bring a surah like the Quran if they are truthful, right? Yeah? And then Allah says in Surah Hud um, 11, ayah 13 and 14. Oh, do they say he invented it? Kul, say, Allah is telling the Prophet to say, then come with 10 surahs like it that have been invented and call upon whomever you can besides Allah if you should be truthful and if, you, and if they don't, if they do not respond to you then know that the Quran was revealed with the knowledge of Allah and that there is no deity except Him then would you not be submitted? So here, I'm going to give you uh, um, what this is saying because I, I, I wasn't really aware of this uh, phenomena there's a brother named um, Muhammad Sheikh Rai, yeah? uh, he's grown only, he's been a, he's been a Quran uh, um, teacher for about over 20 years, right, yeah? And um, I watched his video and, and he said something very interesting, right, yeah? Which makes 100% sense. In Surah Baqarah, it says, and if you are in doubt about what we have sent down upon our son, then come with a surah the like thereof. It's talking about the surah, this came in Surah Baqarah, Allah's telling them in Surah Baqarah, bring one surah like it. The surah that was before, Surah Fatiha. It's talking about Surah Fatiha, bring a Surah Fatiha like it, because the, the disbelievers were saying, right, yeah? this guy, this Muhammad, is not a prophet, he invented it, right, yeah? So Allah's saying, bring one surah like it. Have I got enough time? Okay, thank you. Right? And then in Surah Hud 11, it says bring 10 surahs like it. So now, so, the, so that proves right, the Quran uh, came down in a chronological order. It's proof right, yeah, from Surah Fatih all the way to Surah Nas, right, yeah? But the revelation came down right, yeah, in this order. 
Why? So Allah is saying the first surah, bring the surah like it, is talking about surah Fatiha. And in surah Hud 11, it's talking about um, surah 10, Yunus, surah 9, Al Tawbah, surah 8, Al Anfal, surah 7, Al Araf, surah 6, Al Anam, surah 5, Al Maida, surah Al Nisa 4, and surah Al Imran 3, and surah Baqarah. So these were revealed. When Surah Hud was revealed, right? these were already revealed. So Allah said, bring 10 surahs like it. And in Surah 2, it was talking about one, bring one surah, Surah Baqarah like it. Right? Yeah? So that proves right, the Quran came in a chronological order. Even though the subject matter is not in a chronological order. Because you have to, for example, Surah Talaq. You want to know about Surah Talaq, you're not going to find it just in Surah Talaq. There's other verses and surahs where you have to pick up the Surah uh, Talaq. You have to collect all these surahs and ayat together to understand what talaq is in the Quran. That's when you will know what talaq is all about. Um, yeah, so, um, so for example, I had the last surah that came down, even though it's, it's not in the chronological order, right? Yeah? The last surah that came down was this. Today I have perfected for you your religion and chose for you Al-Islam and a favour from Allah. So this was the last surah, but it's not in a chronological order, right? Yeah? Uh, the subject matter, right? Yeah? But the surah Fatiha and surah an that that is complete in a chronological order and it's always been like that. Now let me continue. Al-Isra, surah Al-Isra 17, ayah 88. Say, if mankind and jinn gathered in order to come with the like of this Qur'an, they could not come with the like of it, even if they were to each other's assistance. Even if mankind and jinn came together to produce the likes of this Qur'an, no one can bring it right, yeah? Doesn't matter what they bring right, yeah? Whether they want to bring Bible, the Old Testament, Hadith, or whichever books in the world, no one can bring the likes of the Qur'an. That's a promise from Allah. Right? So when people say, right, the mainstream Islam say, right, you know what, brother, Quran and Hadith right, came together and they are one. It's a lie because if that is the case, right, Allah would have said it. And if for the sake of argument, right, let's just agree their the, um, falsification, right, then how come yeah, Quran is the only book right, that can be recited even by a six-year-old? Tell them to recite the whole Hadith. Memorize that. No one can memorize no other book except Allah's book, right? This is why it's a miracle. And uh, Surah Nas 4, <coughs> Ayah 82. Then, not they pondered the Quran, and if it had been other than Allah, surely they would have found in it much contradiction, right? Yeah? So you will never find contradiction in the Quran, right? Yeah? The only time people claim that they find contradiction of the Quran is because they haven't grasped the understanding of the message. Once the message gets clarified, right? Yeah? then you will not find contradiction. But if you haven't grasped the understanding of what Allah's message is, right, yeah, people can find contradiction right, yeah, without any knowledge. And um, Surah An nahl 16, Ayah 98 to 100. When you read the Quran, you shall seek refuge in Allah from Satan, the rejected. He has no power over those who have believed and trust in their Lord. His authority is only over those who take him as an ally and those who, uh, those who through him associate others with him. This is a very important verse, right? Yeah? And you must ponder or, and reflect on what Allah is saying here. Whenever we read the Quran, we say, A'uzu billahi minish shaitan rajim The reason why we say that is because when we have to read the Quran without any bias, we can't have any preconcept ideas about what Islam is. You have to read it nakedly, right, yeah, for you to understand the message. Because shaitan whispers in your ears, brother, you can't read Quran, right, yeah? you need to know Arabic, you need to be a scholar, or oh, brother, you need hadith. This is all the whispers of shaitan telling you not to read the Quran, right, yeah, with understanding, because, yeah, this is shaitan whispering in you, right, yeah? so even if you say, rajim, and you still have these thoughts and uh, preconcept ideas, right, yeah, about what you think Islam is, right? Eh? The message was never going to be clarified to you, right? Eh? You have to trust in Allah fully, right? Because it says here, the shayateen has no power over those who believe and trust in their Lord. So if you trust in Allah alone, i.e. Quran, 
you will not be misguided right yeah but if you don't trust in Allah and the Quran yeah and you assume that you need hadith you need this right yeah that's the whispering of shaitan right yeah and you will never grasp the message of Allah and those Allah is saying right yeah through him associate others meaning they associate other books or other concept right yeah with Allah's book so uh, so the shaitan has authority over them not over the believers right yeah like who only take Quran as a guide Surah Al Kalam 68 ayat 37 and 41 or do you have a book in which you study it's a rhetorical question Allah's put into these people or do you have a book in which you study and that indeed for you is whatever you choose this is what you say in it you don't believe in Quran yeah when you say there's no five prayers in, uh, in Quran there's no um, uh, this in Quran or that in Quran right you need hadith so this is the book you come with this is the book you study right Allah is saying do you have a book in which you studied that indeed for you is whatever you choose you want to choose whatever you want to believe or do you have oaths upon us extending till the day of day of resurrection that indeed for you is whatever you judge you want to judge everything from hadith and not Quran ask them Allah is telling us the believers to ask them which of them is responsible that indeed uh, sorry ask them or do you have partners then let them bring their partners if they should be truthful so they're going to bring to you hadith they're going to bring to you bible they're going to bring to you old testament they're going to bring to you all these false books right yeah that are not from allah and allah clearly says in surah saba 34 ayah 44 and we had not given them any book which they could study and we had not sent to them before you any warner so these Arabs right, were not given any other book to study except Quran right and Muhammad was sent as a warner to them right eh? to tell them that Quran to give them the book to study was Quran but they want to study hadith they want to study other books right eh? that's fine right eh? Allah is watching over them and Surah Al-Annam <coughs> And thus do we diversify the verses so that disbelievers will say you have studied and so we make we may make the Quran clear for people who know so this ayah Fusilat 41 ayah 44 is very very important because a lot of people have this misconception right here that you need to know Arabic to get the understanding of the message of Allah but it's not about knowing Arabic because remember the Quran came down as a mercy a guidance to all mankind all mankind so it's going to be translated in the language of the people because Allah says right Allah does not send messengers except in the language of the people so that he may clarify to them what the message Allah wants to say so in this one Surah Fusila 41, Ayah 44 It says, And if we made it a non-Arabic i.e. Quran If this Quran came down in non-Arabic They would have said, the people would have said Why are its verses not explained in detail? Fusila Then it says, what? Foreign and Arab? Say, it is for those who believe a guidance and a healing <laughs> and those who do not believe in their ears is deafness and upon them is blindness those are being called from a distance place you see and what it says is that the reason why Quran came in the Arabic text is because the fact it's a detailed language if it was in any other language, Chinese, Japanese, English or any other language, right, eh, the, the Quran probably would be this thick or even thicker. The Arabic is so rich, right, eh, it compresses the words of Allah into 114 chapters. Only Arabic, Arabic language can do that. This is why it was in Arabic, not because of the Arabs. Because it says, if an Arab, right, whether Arab or foreign, 
if what if if an Arab was uh, getting the message in Arabic and he doesn't believe in it because the criteria remember is the belief if he doesn't believe in the ayat right yeah then there is no healing for that Arab but if a foreign gets the message in his language and he believes in it then it's a guidance and a healing for that non-Arab so here Allah is distinguished right yeah it's got nothing to do with one being an Arab right yeah so if one wants to have this you know advantage of being an Arab right yeah then Allah has clarified here, right, yeah, that that's not the case, right, yeah, because the criterion is to believe. You have to believe in the ayats of Allah, whether it's in Arabic or any other language. Because, <coughs> excuse me, because Arabic is the uh, criterion and a detailed language, and that gets transferred into other languages, right, yeah, because the message has to be clarified and understood, not to recite. You know what I'm saying? So if a non-Arab why gets the message in his language the quran in his language right and he doesn't believe in it there's no guidance and a healing for that non-arab right yeah and vice versa so that proves right yeah? it's got nothing to do with one being an arab so when people say oh brother you don't know arabic right yeah they're falsifying right yeah because they know arabic but they don't understand it like the majority of the muslims don't understand arabic right they don't understand the message so it's not a healing a shifa, there's no healing for them, there's no guidance for them because they don't believe in it. Because Why? Because they don't understand it. For you to believe in it, you have to understand the message. And it doesn't matter if it's in Arabic or, or non-Arabic. Uh, Surah Ibrahim 14, Ayah 4. And we have not sent any messenger except in the language of the people, so he may clarify for them. But, but, but God misguides whom he rules, and he guides whom he wills, and he is the noble, the wise. And Surah An Nahal 16, 101 to 105. Now this verse, um, like I said earlier on, right? Yeah, it was talking about when I was talking about how the Quran came in a uh, in in the correct order that we see the Quran today, Surah Fatiha all the way to Surah An Nas. But when you want to know a subject, for example, talaq, or any subject. Uh, from Quran, right? You have to take verses from different surahs and ayats, right? And you bring them together to understand the clarity of what Allah is saying in that subject matter. So it says here, when we substitute a verse in place of a verse, so when we change a verse in place of a, of a verse, and God is fully aware what He sends down, they say, you made this up. Indeed, most of them do not know. Kul, say, the pure spirit has brought it down from your Lord, truthfully, to assure those who believe and a guidance and good news for the submitters. We are fully aware that they say a human being is teaching him. Right? Oh, some human being is teaching him, right? Yeah? The tongue of the source they hint to is non-Arabic. Right? Like the, 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 the Bible and, the, uh, and, and, and books in other languages, right? Yeah? The tongue of the source they hint to is non-Arabic, while this language is Arabic clear, clear Arabic. So Arabic, the clear Arabic, not the dialectical Arabic, the clear Arabic right, yeah, is clear to everyone right, yeah? It's not, it doesn't have any dialect, it's just clear Arabic right, yeah? But Allah uses Arabic and He uses uh, the words and placement His way. This is why no one can bring a, a, a better sentence than Allah. So this is why you can't bring a better sentence than Allah, right? Yeah, when He uses clear Arabic, right? Yeah, and 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 places words, right? Yeah, together. So surely those who do not believe in in the verses of God, God does not guide them. So if you do not believe in the verses of Allah, Allah will not guide you ever. They have incurred a painful retribution. They only fabricate who do not believe in the verses of God and they are the liars. So when, 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 I, when anyone brings the verses together, right, yeah, they say, oh, this is your own interpretation, right? They, they falsify, you know what I'm saying? When the message gets clarified about a particular subject, they're going to say, oh, this guy is making up, you're taking it from there, you're taking it from there. But Allah just clarifies it, right? Yeah? Allah does it. Allah does this, right? Yeah? And Surah Yunus 10, Ayah 57. O mankind, there has come to you instruction from your Lord. 
and healing for what is in the breast and a guidance and a mercy for the believers. Surah Al Isra. One second. 1782. And we send down the Quran what is healing and mercy. How much, how much have I got? No, you got. You got, you got uh, about, how long more? You got uh, about about 10, 10 15 minutes more. And we, <coughs> and we send down the, uh, from Quran uh, what is healing and mercy. And, okay, sorry. Surah Hud 11, Ayah 1. Alif Lam Ra. A book whose verses are perfected then presented in detail from the wise and acquainted. Allah is wise and he's acquainted. Surah Fusilat 41, Ayah 3. A book whose verses have been detailed, an Arabic Quran reading. Quran means reading, the Arabic reading for people who know. Surah Yunus 10, Ayah 37. And it was not for this Quran to be produced by other than Allah, but a confirmation of what is between his hands and a detailed explanation of the book about which there is no doubt from the Lord of the world. So, when the Quran means reading, Al-Kitab means the book. If the book is closed, you will never know the detail of Allah's message. The detail will not come out. You have to read. You have to read. Um, and it's a confirmation. What is between his two hands. So when you're reading the Quran, you're reading the, the ayats, right? in a book which the detail of the detailed explanation comes out from the book about which there is no doubt otherwise if the book is closed or you don't read it or you're just reading Arabic without understanding right the detail will not come out you will not know the message of Allah so it's very very important that you know the meaning and understanding of the ayats okay and we have certainly brought them sorry through Al Araf 752 and we have certainly brought them a book which we detail by knowledge as guidance and a mercy to people who believe Surah Yusuf I've got to be quick right yeah so um, um, so I'm just going to speed up slightly right yeah so do uh, please bear with me plus I'm getting a uh, tide uh, There were certainly in their stories, sorry, Surah Yusuf 12, Ayah 111, there was certainly in their stories a lesson of those of understanding. Never was Quran a hadith invented. This Quran was not a hadith invented because Allah calls this Quran Asnal Hadith, best hadith. One of the names and attributes of the book. Um, never was the Quran a hadith invented, but a confirmation of what was before it and a detailed explanation of all things and a guidance and a mercy for people who believe. Surah al baruj 85, Ayah 21 and 22. But this is an honoured Quran in a tablet preserved. So the Quran, the, the reading is preserved in a tablet in the hearts and minds of people. It's preserved. And uh, uh, in the text as well, right? It's preserved in the text as well. The reading is preserved in the text. Right, and also in the hearts and minds of people, right? Yeah? In Al Hajj, Al Hujr. Al Hijr, fifteen, ayah nine. <coughs> but this is uh, I've, I've said this one. Al Hijr, fifteen, ayah nine. Indeed, it is we who send down the reminder, and indeed we will preserve it. This is a reminder preserved. So the, the, the reminder is preserved and also the reading in the hearts and, and minds of people. Surah Al Waqiyah 56, Ayah 77 and 80. Indeed, it is an honorable Quran in a book concealed. The reading is concealed inside a book. None can touch it except purified. A revelation from the Lord of the Words. So when the book is closed, the reading is hidden. So most majority of Muslims, they put the Quran right on top of the shelf. It's there for years. Or once a year they bring it out, maybe in Ramadan and they'll open it. But even when they do open it, right, they don't read it with understanding. right? Yeah? So the detail cannot come out. The message of Allah cannot be understood. right? So it's like they are intoxicated. Allah is saying, do not come to Salah 
intoxicated until you know what you are saying. So when people are even reading the Quran without understanding that is intoxication because they don't understand it. You have to understand what Allah is saying for you to be unintoxicated. Surah Al-Hajj 22, Ayah 52 to 54. And we did not send before you any messenger or prophet except that when he spoke, Satan threw into it. Shaitan threw into it the misunderstanding. But Allah abolishes that which Satan throws in. Then Allah makes precise his verses. And Allah is knowing and wise. So Allah is saying that, you see when we read the Quran, right, eh? Shaitan can whisper in our heads and make us, uh, when we try to read it, make us think that Allah is saying this or Allah is saying that, right, yeah? When, when Allah doesn't say that, right, yeah? And Allah makes precise his verses because, right, yeah? Somewhere in the Quran, right, yeah? The contradiction will come. And you said, uh, uh, this is wrong. The Quran is perfected and it's, it's, it cannot be, you cannot put your interpretation in it. Never ever you can do that because it will be fished out. You know what I'm saying? And Allah makes it precise, the verses. This is what Allah is saying here. So he, but Allah says, so he may make what Satan throws in a trial, a trial for those within whose hearts is disease and those hard of heart, right? They will interpret it wrongly. You know what I'm saying? Those whose hearts have, have been hardened, you know what I'm saying? Who don't fear Allah, you know what I'm saying? And indeed the wrongdoers are in extreme dissension. And so, those who are given knowledge, so those who have been given knowledge, may know that it is the truth from your Lord and believe in it. And in their hearts, they, in their hearts they humbly submit. They submit to the truth. You know what I'm saying? Not, you know, wrong uh, ideas about the Quran. Right, yeah? And indeed, Allah, Allah is the guide of those who believe, who are believed to a straight path. So here, People think, right, yeah, you know, the Prophet, peace be upon him, right, yeah. <clears throat> he was, uh, you know, uh, he had Sahabas around him, and that's fine, yeah. We, we believe in the good Sahabas, right, yeah, that I can't verify, yeah, but Allah knows who they are. If they were righteous, right, yeah, then Allah knows. We don't know. But Allah is saying, yeah, and thus we have made for every Prophet an enemy devils from mankind and jinn inspiring to one another decorative speech in delusion but if your lord had willed they would not have done it so leave them and that which they invent now this clear verse right here says right here for every prophet there's devils from mankind and the jinn surrounding prophets all prophets of allah why because yeah they are not happy with the truth that came to the prophets the book that came to the prophets, right, yeah? And they want to abolish that, right, yeah? Do you know what I'm saying? And they want to bring their own version. They want to bring their own version, right, yeah? And, and not believe in Allah, right, yeah? And they bring with decorative speech and in delusion, like you find them in Hadith, in, 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 in uh, uh, Bible, in uh, Old Testament, falsifying about Allah with decorative speech. This Quran is from Allah. You can't alter anything in this Quran. This is the only book that has been sent down for all mankind. This is the only guide. We have no other guide, Raya. We have no other helpers. Can I ask a question? I'm talking, brother. Sorry, brother. Surah Al-Furqan, 25, Ayah 30 to 33. And the messenger has said, O oh my Lord, indeed my people have taken this Quran, this Quran. Abandoned. They have abandoned the Quran. Why is he saying that? He's going to say that on the Day of Judgment. But then you say, right, these people right, yeah, who believe in Hadith say that Prophet is going to intercede for us, right, yeah, and he's going to save us, right, yeah. But no. You either believe what Allah says or you believe what these people tell you from the Hadith. If you believe in Allah, then you know that Prophet will say, my people have abandoned the Quran. Right? Not abandon the Hadith, abandon the Quran. And thus, have we made for every prophet enemy from among the criminals? But sufficient is your Lord as a guide and a helper. And those who disbelieve say, Why was the Quran not revealed to him all at once? Thus, that we may strengthen thereby your heart, and we have spaced it distinctly. And they do not come to you with an argument except that we bring you the truth 
and the best tafsir, the best explanation. Only Allah can bring the best explanation, right, yeah? I'm nearly done, right, yeah? <coughs> and do not say as to what your tongues falsify or describe, like in the hadith. This is lawful and that is forbidden, right? Yeah? This is, this, these guys, they don't tell you from Quran, they would always bring hadith to you, right? So the hadith says this, hadith says that, hadith forbids that, hadith uh, allows that, you know what I'm saying? But they will never bring you to it, they will never come to you with Quran, you know what I'm saying? Because they don't read the Quran. All people of the book, they has come to you, our messenger, making clear to you much of what you used to conceal of the book and overlooking much. There has come to you from Allah a light and a clear book. This book is a light. That's one of the names and attributes of the book. Now, <clears throat> lastly, I want to say something very important, right? What Muhammad Hijab said, right? Yeah? It's a video two to three years back, right? He was having a debate with um, my, my good brother Cameron about he tried to say that in Quran. In Quran, he's insinuating that Quran allows for you to have intercourse with a child. And this is going to sound quite scary to you right now, yeah? The reason why it's allowed to have sexual intercourse with a five-year-old is not found in the Quran whatsoever. It's found in the Sunnah and in fact, and in fact, if you look just at the Quran, you will get the indication that you can have sexual intercourse with five years. Surah 65, Ayah 4, he, he used this verse right, yeah, to justify yeah, that we can astaghfirullah, have sex with a child according to the Quran, right, yeah? 65, Ayah 4, as for those who despair, seized of menstruation among your women, if you doubt, then their period is three months. Also, for those who did not menstruate, meaning that for that period, for, that, for, the, for the following month, they did not menstruate, chances are they are pregnant. And those who are pregnant, right? Their term is until they, em they emitted their pregnancy. And whoever rever reverences God, he will make his matter easy for him. And in uh, Surah 65, 1, it says, O oh, you prophet, when you divorce the women, then divorce them by their period, i.e. in three months period, right, yeah? And count the period. And beware, your Lord. Do not expel them from their homes. You can't expel them, even if they, if you want to divorce them, right? You can't, you cannot expel them until after this three months period is over, right? Because the chances are they could be pregnant. Nor shall they leave unless they have committed a proven adultery. If, they, if, if you can prove that they are committing proven adultery right here, you cannot let them go until the three months is, three period months is over. These are the limits of God and whoever trespasses the limits of God, then he has wronged his soul. You do not know, perhaps God will bring about a matter after that. What he's saying that if you are in a divorce situation, three months, she gives birth and then a child is born right here, then he might say, wow, I want this child, I, I, don't, I, I want to cancel the divorce right here, I, you know, for the sake of the child right here. Allah brings a different situation right here, then they might, you know, come together, reunite right here, and the divorce gets cancelled. Surah Baqarah 2, Ayah 228. Divorced women, women remain in waiting for three periods. It is not lawful for them to conceive what Allah has created in their womb. They can't conceive from their husband what the Allah has put them in their, in their womb, the child. If they believe in Allah and the last day. And they, their husbands have more right to take them back in this period. If they want reconciliation. And due to their wives is similar to what is expected of them. According to what is response, uh, reasonable. But the men have a degree over them in responsibilities, of course, one degree above a woman. Not because a man is more superior than a woman. It's just that man has given responsibility to take in charge of women. And Allah is exalted in might and wise. Ayat, uh, Surah 3349, all you have believed, when you marry believing women and then divorce them before you have touched them, 
then there is not for you any waiting period. Because you haven't had intercourse with them, then I have to wait three months now. Because the, they will not, you, you are 100% sure they can't be pregnant because you haven't touched them. This is why the only reason the three months period is Allah has given us, because right here, the husband and wife right here, and then chances are they could be pregnant. This is the only reason why for pregnancy reasons, they have to wait three months right here in the houses. So provide, uh, so Allah says, then there is not for you any waiting period to count concerning them. So provide for them and give them a gracious release. Not chuck them out nicely and, and, and humbly say, thank you, you know, we, we are no longer together and leave with good terms. And this one, proof that Quran says no one can marry underage girl. This is the proof. Quran Surah 4, Surah An Nisa, Ayah 6. And test the orphans until they reach marriageable age. Then, if you perceive in them Rushdan, Rushdan means someone who's, who has rationality, maturity, sound judgment, self control, right way, and intellect. A child cannot have all these right here. Yeah? A child cannot have Rushdan until they have reached this term of rationality, maturity, sound judgment. A child cannot have any sound judgment. So Allah is saying, then release their properties to them and do not consume it excessively or quickly that they will grow up. So if, 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 a, if a child is under your uh, wing right here and now they've grown up, you have to save their money. You have to, you have to not spend their money right here. Because in case they grow up quickly, right? Yeah, and then when it's time for them, when they, when they, thank you, yeah, and when they, so when they grow up quickly, right? Yeah, all of a sudden you say, oh, sorry, I spent all the money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, right? So I can't give you anything to, to, to release you, right? Or get you married. This is what Allah is saying. So Allah is saying, release their property to them and do not consume it excessively, excessively or quickly, that they will grow up, and whoever is self-sufficient. So whoever is rich should refrain from taking their money. They can't, they, they can't touch the money. If they're already rich, they don't have to touch their money. So they, they're not allowed to touch, touch the money. But then Allah says, then, uh, um, and whoever is poor, but if you are poor, let him take according, accordingly, a, accordingly to what is acceptable. So you can consume a little bit of money right here yeah, because you're poor right here. Yeah? but not too much in case they grow up right yeah, and there's nothing left to give them right yeah, when you marry them. Then when you release their properties to them, bring witnesses upon them and sufficient is God as account. So ladies and gentlemen, right, yeah, sorry um, <coughs> I've been shouting um, and screaming my head off right here. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I just want to say last words, right? So uh, I hope uh, you've understood everything what I said and, um, uh, and comprehend the verses. I've given you the verses right here. Go home, read the book right here, read the Quran before you die at least once. Read it with your own understanding. Don't let people, scholars and your families right here tell you right here, brother, you only need Quran right here. I mean, you, uh, you, you, you don't need to read, just read it, read, recite. Don't let them say that to you. You must read the book with understanding right here at least once in your life right here yeah? so you can come to guide us because this is the only chance we have in this life when we die there's no chance right so i'm i'm just help i'm just want to tell i want to help the brothers and sisters right here yeah, who don't know about this right here yeah? i want to bring you into the light the book of allah is the light and guidance right here yeah? by the permission of allah right here yeah? and please brothers and sisters right here yeah, learn and teach and use your reasoning intellect Right? Allah said, ponder, reflect upon the verses. This is what the intellect Allah gave us. We, Allah gave us the intellect for a reason. This is why we are not animals, right? We are human beings. We can, we can use reasoning. And this is why Allah has given us the eyes, ears, and, uh, and intellect to reason. Thank you and goodbye. Assalamu alaikum. Just want to say these verses here. Get these references for you. Right? Surah 33, verse 38. Surah 35, verse 42 and 43. Surah 33, verse 62, Surah 17, verse 70, 77, 
and Surah 48 verse 23, Allah says that there is only one Sunnah and that is Sunnah of Allah. And I'll read that out right now. Inshallah. Right. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Aud bilam shalim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Sunnat Allahi Allati kad halat min kablu walan tajida li sunnat Allahi sunnat Allahi tabdilan. Right. That verse there. Allah says from the Quran. Allah says that this is Sayyid International. I'm using. Allah says that the established way of Allah which has occurred before and never will you find in the way of Allah any change. So the only sunnah is a sunnah of Allah and that is in the book of Allah. And the, the references I've given you, the verses, surahs, go and check them out brothers and sisters and find out for yourself. You know, uh, about three weeks ago, um, the, um, the, the, uh, there was a video made and they said that I couldn't read Arabic. Yes, I, I cannot read Arabic properly, but I've learned Arabic now, inshallah, right here. Yeah? And I've read the verse out for you. And that verse clearly states that there is only one way, and that is the way of Allah, which, is ha which has occurred before. And never would you find in the way of Allah any change. Thank you, brothers. Yeah, and lastly, <coughs> أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين So I can read Arabic right here Surah Fatiha but you have to understand what Surah Fatiha is, is all about right here brothers and sisters read it in English in your translation and you know that Surah Fatiha is only the introduction of what is to come Next, from Surah, to, from Surah Baqarah. This is an introduction, a guidance for mankind right here. And Allah tells you what this Surah is all about. Thank you. And this is going to sound quite scary to you. Right? Yeah? The reason why it's halal to have sexual intercourse with a five-year-old is not found in the Quran whatsoever. It's found in the Sunnah and in fact. And in fact, if you look just at the Quran, you will get the indication that you can have sexual intercourse with five-year-olds. No. Don't take over everything!